There we go. Okay, we'll balance it. Yoki, we're just going to start with a little bit of a quick warm up. Just start with the neck and stretching up, stretching down, looking up, down, nice and gentle. Stop. Go into the left and the right. <coughs> and the left and the right. Good. Nice and easy over to the side. We have to shoulder, change, and change, change. It's nice and easy circles at the front. And then nice and loose, just circling a little bit in the back. Okay, they just down the shoulders, just lift them up. You can also clench the fists if you like as you do this. Bring them up and just release them down. Bring them up nice and tight. And up and go. One more time. And go. Okay, just circling them nice and big. Just trying to isolate the shoulders. You've got these four big directions. So you've got the down, front, up, and then to the back. Just allow everything to really move. Don't okay, kick it. Thanks for a little bit of the chest as well, the shoulder blades, and feel what's going on in that joints. Good. And then just a nice bit, a little bit bigger. Now involving the elbows coming forward. It's kind of. Dun. Let the elbows really kind of stretch back as well, so kind of drawing, pulling back, and then coming forward. So involve the kind of the chest. You can also kind of arc, arc the back, and then press it kind of forward. Good. And then just rolling the shoulders like this, back. Nice and loose. So this one's kind of pushing the shoulders. One, two. Yes. And just working the arms this way, opening the chest as well. And just doing the same with the elbows, just out, opening, opening. Okay, just start to sweat the hips. So just do one, two, three, on side. One, two, three. It's kind of led by the elbow. And then just opening the hands out. So you're going to make extension, big arc. Again, just try in threes. So you're going to go pulls, two, three. Pulls, one, two, three. One. Two, three, good. Okay, just coming down to the hips. Nice big, big circles. And the other way. Okay, just letting the feet go. Really working from the hips. Especially letting the arms now. The kind of key position for me is also, is the out, but also when they wrap around the body. So really allow the arms to kind of wrap the body. You're also really working the shoulder joints as well. So you're allowing the arm to really wrap around and also to the back. You can let it let the arm kind of spiral around the body. So. Good. Okay, just down to the knees. Very tight circles. Keep the ankles nice and mobile. Both ways. Nice and light. 
Okay, just straighten the legs back as much as you can. And just bend them forward again as much as you can. You can probably get a bit deeper than me. A moment, I set back as far as I can go. Then back again. Straight. So you're stretching all the way through the front of the toes as well. So try and include the whole the shin, the toes, everything. Good. Just working the ankles. Work the ball of the foot and also work the toes nice and gently. So you kind of curl the toes over a little bit. And do that. It's like very light. You don't want to do you don't want to put hardly any weight on the toes like this part. Just play with them. So work the toes a little bit individually. Then just play, lift the toes up and just, just kind of crunch them like this. Just kind of close the toes. So you can kind of spread them and then close them. Spread, close. Spread and close them. Good. And just on the other side, just roll it, working the ankle joint both ways, and then also the toes, very lightly. And just working the toes kind of individually, just on the end, especially the big toe. And, the others. and just lifting it up, just do the same thing, kind of splaying, closing and opening. Okay, good. Just come down with the body, just sink the body down a little bit. Do like a horse stance, straighten the spine out. Yeah, and then you're just gonna start very gently, just rotating into it. You're gonna just straighten the arm, work into it. And then what you're gonna do eventually is like straighten the arm, really watch, look over the shoulder. Feel really the spine lengthening as you do it. Make it nice and easy. Sink down into it, lengthen the spine. Good. Okay, we're just going to finish just nice lengthening breath exercise. So just stretching up, blow the body back a little bit, and then breathing forward, bending the knees, breathing out. Draw back towards the center, pick the knees up, and stretch them back up. Make it quite dynamic. About eight, fall in, fully in, and just let the breath go. Really consciously lengthen in the spine all the time. Okay, and on this next one, breathe in nice and deep and just hold it at the bottom. Let all the breath go. Let the hands come down. Place them into the ground if you like. Put the palms down. Just let all the breath exit the body. Especially releasing the top of the head. And when you feel you need to breathe, just take a nice gentle breath. Just start to pass like a wave through the spine. Nice and grounded with the hands. Got four points of contact. Just feel the spine lengthen. And try and think as free as possible. Start to make it a little bit bigger. So you're working out the fingertips. The fingertips, like they just, they make a figure of eight pattern on the ground. You go like infinity. And you don't do it with the arms, but do it with the body. But do it with the spine, the hips. Let the hands just follow. Keep the breath going. And then what I want you to do is follow that movement. Just start to pull the body up back to center. So I'm just going to slowly draw up. Draw up through the spine. Also work the movement in the hips as well. So everything should be pretty free. 
and just slowly in your own time, just draw the body back up. That's it. Good. Good. That's it. Yeah, and take as long as you like with it. Be nice and slow. Great. Great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Cool. Okay, does everyone have a soft floor? Soft dish? Yeah. Okay. If you've got a yoga mat or something like that, that's okay. But I'm just going to do a soft, soft, okay, just here on the ground. <clears throat> just using their hands. So just coming back. It's coming through and changing like this. I'd really use this as like a, one thing is for the back, really, really allowing the, the spine to kind of massage itself, self-massage. And the other thing is really opening the hip. So when you come forward, through this position, give yourself a little bit of an extra. So with the hands, really allow them, the front hand to come forward and touch the ground. A lot of the time we do the movement like this, and I'm kind of half way doing it, but there's this extra movement where I come forward and uh, and I just go a little bit extra into the hip. So you're really working the hip flexion. So we'll do about I'll do about 50. <clears throat> just just do it at your own speed, your own rhythm. We can follow if you like, but I'll just do about 50. Okay. So use the arms, use the breath. Just go for it. Do about 50. Let's make it as soft as possible. We really find like your lower body is the, the motor for the movement. So the legs, the backside, and the arms are just there to guide the body. Last 15 or so, just really again consciously lengthen the spine. So you're going through like a curling of the spine and then a lengthening. Curling and lengthening. That's the last few. And make the last few as easy as the first. That's five. And there we go. Good. Okay. Great. That's about 50. So, okay, great. We're just going to work, we're going to work a little bit on a tiny work tonight. So, I'm going to show you on the ground. Hopefully, you can do it on the ground. You can also do these exercises on a wall. So, <clears throat> if they're a bit hard or you find that the, the, the floor's a bit heavy or hard, <clears throat> you can also do this on a wall, no problem. So, I'll try and show both. But if you can do this, do this on the ground, they're a bit heavy. So, the first thing is, is just using what I would start in the dojo with, with a tenny work or striking work. It's always with a push. So, it's, we always start from a push. And that's also like Saito Sensei's system rather than going straight into like uh, ski work. He always starts with like Munadori stuff. So you see this in the videos. He would do like a progression from Munadori and then into a push and then into a strike. And you basically follow this. We follow a similar kind of thing with the strike. Work. So just the first thing is a bit like a kind of press up, but just do it with the knees. So it's just like this. And you just like, I just want you to explore the structure of the shoulder and the arm. So you just kind of press it into it. Just have both hands down, move them around, around a little bit and just explore the joint. Yeah. Start to bring the body a little bit down into them. So, but just use the palm contact. Nice and easy. Shouldn't be a struggle at all. Just move the hands around a little bit. Press a little bit of weight into them. 
If you feel really comfortable with it, start to press a little bit more into them. Bring the body a little bit close to the ground. Just explore it. Just watch a few. See if you've got the idea. Okay. Okay, good. Good. That's it. That's it. Yeah, good. Okay. So the, the first step as well, always for me, is about I go into kind of flexibility stuff as well. So just, just notice how flexible the joint is. So some of you are a bit, yes, this is fine, but some of you are a little bit in, in like press up position like this. Know that you can go out of that. So you can go like to these kind of positions. So just pick a point now, like, like you're kind of walking, be like a dog, kind of walk, and then just press the body into it. So move, find a point where you feel kind of the like structure's kind of comfortable, and then just drop into it. Now it doesn't have to be press up position. In fact, in fact, it's like better if it's not. There. So you've got these four, you've actually got six points of contact. So you've got the toes, you've got the knees, and you've got the hands. So it's a very comfortable position. Shouldn't be strenuous at all. That's good. good. Just explore like opening the hands up a little bit wider, maybe putting them a bit uh, far apart. Think a bit like Spider Man. So when Spider Man's like climbing the wall, <clears throat> when he first learns to climb walls in the in the in the movies, you're kind of you you basically shifted the relationship from the from the looking at the ground like a wall. So imagine the the, the ground is now like a wall. You're going to play with it like that. That's it. That's it. That's it. It's just about exploring the structure for now. That's it. Yeah, and make it as hard as you like so you can play with the legs. If you feel like it, get off the knees so you can just use the toes as contact and just play with it again, pressing weight into, into the structure and just make it playful. Just, just exploring the structure. Yeah, that's it. Good. That's it. Got it. And just so you know, go, come totally out of structure. So when you do this, now watch something like this. So if I go like here and totally out of alignment, and then what I do is I press, I, I miss the base. So everything's coming out like this. And it's going to take a lot of effort to do it. So if it would be like a really, really very hard push-up, so this would be good for training the muscles, but working out of structure, especially in terms of striking work, will really, really give me a lot of feedback into the shoulder joint. So I don't want to be striking where the, where the structure's out. But just so you know, really explore it being a bit out of structure. So for example, like this, it's a bit like here, and then I'm pressing into it, but uh, there's no real structure behind it. You'll either kind of collapse into it, or you'll have to hold it up with like pure strength. But just explore a few like in and out of structure. Make it a bit, make it really clear, like where the shoulder can't, can't receive the weight properly. That's it. And the, the, your structure will either collapse into it, into the ground, or you'll, you'll be able to hold it up with, with just strength, but again, just explore it a little bit. That's it. Good. That's it. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super. Nice. Good. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Great. <clears throat> so this, what I, what I work with a push with students is like we work from contact and then we push through. So I get the contact on the body and then I get 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 the contact, uh, get the movement to start from there. So starting with the push, the contact, and then coming through with it. And then what you progress through is like the contact coming in and taking the push. So first you train that structure, get the get a good structure, and then press the body into it, press through the ground into it. And then what you do is just transfer that into action. Yeah. So you're going to do a similar thing now. Some of you are actually already doing it, so just follow it if you're already doing this. You basically now do this in action. And then back. So it's like a kind of really active push-up. Do this on the knees to start, and do this just first nice and low. Just letting the body go down. And I want this, the hand okay, to receive the whole body. So it's like, boom. Just make it light, very playful. Boom. You probably find the first you just do it like a kind of press up. That's it. So 
So now the body's already a little bit committed into the movement before the, before the contact comes. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's it, good. Okay. Great. Okay, I wish I could show this. I can't quite show it. I'm, I'm gonna give it a try, but just because I'm here, I can't quite show it. Imagine, imagine you're gonna be like this position now. So a lot of you, a lot of you are doing it if I showed it like this. Like you're a little bit like you were taking your penny into it. So you're kind of coming down into it and then coming into it. That, that, for me, that's the way I need to do it right now. And that's like where we start from. And then what I want you to get is the feeling like the body's here, and then it just falls into the ground. And just the first few, I can't quite control it at the moment, so I'll just splat into the ground. But just get a first few where it's like you're long, you've got this movement. I wish I could do it, but I can't quite get that movement. I can't quite get this, but just get the feeling like you go, boom, and then do it. And then try and get back up. I can't quite do it, but just see if you can get it. Hopefully you get the idea. You're gonna go a bit down like wrong. Yeah. So it's really like you're kind of falling now. You need the contact in the, in the arms to control the descent. So this is really a bit like the heavy work. I'm not trying to stop myself. I'm trying to slow my descent down through, through the contact. That's it. So it's like you feel like you're pressing into the ground. And the ground's like pressing back. So you're kind of meeting the ground in a way. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. And as you do it, make sure to breathe as you do it. If the worst thing I can do is hold my breath. Boom. So just breathe out. Boom. There we go. And if you splat into the ground a few times, don't worry. It's kind of happens. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, good. That's it, Bob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Good. Boom. Okay, great. There we go, Bettina, nice. Yeah, 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 good. And it's funny, even with a movement like this, there's a little bit of fear. And I have a bit of fear now about I'm gonna injure my knee. I don't have a fear about falling. It's kind of, I just, I just got over that, but just have the sense now you're gonna just fall into the ground, receive it and go. Great. Okay, we're just gonna go back to the we're gonna go to the fist now. So just just you're just gonna make a nice, nice fist. What you want is like a kind of cushioned fist. So if you if you've ever done karate or something like this, we we, we tend to in karate do like I'm gonna strike mostly with the, the with the two knuckles. So you get that kind of fist. So it's a kind of specific kind of fist. But in, in terms of Aikido work, you can have quite a loose fist. So it needs it needs to be something that got a kind of impact too. Now, first, it needs to be quite soft. So just kind of just practice making a fist. Just you can do this on your knees, wherever you are. Just down and just practice just, just impacting very lightly with the hand. Now, if I'm used, I'm pretty used to like, if I think about karate stuff, it's like, I'm going to strike with those two knuckles. That way. So it's got to come there. There. But you can do this if, you, if you've ever done like Sistema before. They, they tend to like make a cushioned hand like that, and then it's like a kind of boom. And you also see sometimes they put the thumb a little bit on the on the top, but just like so maximize the contact. And it should be quite soft. It's kind of done. So just do both sides at the same time. Like boom, boom. And also something quite heavy. Just watch one that even this is really simple. Just watch, I don't want to impact the hand. So it's, it's not really like this, it's like this. Oh, the rattle. There. There. So I want to, I want to feel, if I, if I look at this as a joint, I want to feel the force go through, through the wrist and out the elbow. Now, if I get that right, it's gonna go into the foot as well. But have the feeling like it's contact pressing through. This is why the push is so important because the push teaches us how to make contact and then how to press the stretcher through the contact point. So I first learned it like boom with the push and then boom, pressing the body. 
And then I get the point where the, the body and the contact come together. And then I make that into a strike. <clears throat> it's got that same kind of quality. Imagine like a kind of train passing through. So this is just in the way. And it's not the object to hit. I'm not interested in hitting the hand. I mean, so it's like passing the force through it. So it's got that kind of quality. That kind of quality. The hand just happens to be in the way in this case. That's it. Just try both sides. Just notice that there's a difference, one side or the other. Left side might be a bit more uncoordinated. Maybe a little bit. That's it. Nice and soft. Awesome. That's it. Good. Good. <laughs> yeah, if you're doing it hard, like, ow, it hurts. <laughs> Don't do it too hard. Do it nice and soft. So always with, with, with Makiwari training or, or Temi work, especially Makiwari training, is I really start really slow. So do, I do like often and very, very, very little of it. But I do it, I do it a lot and very little but i don't want to do too much with it that's it da, da. just try this a different one now we're going to do a little bit with this uraken so it's like this one now in karate this will be done with the with the knuckles this way so it's, it's done where i'm going to hit with the knuckles second this way so what i want to do is the same thing but you're going to have the sense of like this and again i want a feeling like it's received down. A little bit, this is really like how you would make a Bakken strike. So rather than hitting, I'm impacting. Boom. So the, the feeling's like impacting through, impacting through, and just keep it light. Uh, the great thing about Uraken is it can be very light. So it can be very loose. It doesn't need to be so rigid like this. So just feel that it's gonna come over. Even make it big, it's like looping. Now later that's gonna be here, but just get the sense of that. And try and get the thing like the centers behind it. Oh, bad one. And again, keep this feeling like not impact, not hitting the object, impacting through. It's got that kind of quality. That's it. That's it. That's it. Boom. Good. Okay. The other one we're going to look at is, is like a Yokomen work. Just do the first the first time you can do it like this, like, like a hammer fist. So this is to make it really clear. The, the big problem I see with Yokomen Uchi work, especially in Aikido, people hit with the, with the fingers like this. Or they hit like this. Like this. And they hit the finger. This is the most stupid thing you could do. If you think you're going to hit the hardest part of the, part of the head, one of the hardest parts of the head, with the finger, the, one of the one of the lightest bones in the body. Well, not one of them, but but super light. So if I impact, especially if I impact it like that, it's going to go. Kum, kum, kum. So I just break all the finger. You will do it one time and never do it ever again. But just get, just keep the finger. You're going to make like a hammer fist. This was a traditional karate one, but it's like a hammer fist, and it's like oh. And what I'm hitting now is like that part. So this is like the soft. This is like a bit like the heel of the hand, the heel of the, the foot in the hand. So it's got that. Now this is really, really, it's just automatically heavy. So it's like that, boom. Very, very effective strike, super effective. You just need the person in the right position, boom. But it's a very, very, very effective strike. Again, just get the feeling like you can drop everything into it. Drop everything in. And this is just like Shomenuchi work or Yokomenuchi work. So just play a little bit with the, with the angle. So. It's just getting used to like impacting with the fist. Again, if you get kind of lost with, if you ever get lost with the Atemi work, go back to the feeling you have in the Bokken work <clears throat> because it's the closest relationship we've got. It's the clearest thing we've got, like that. And just, it's the same body mechanics. Gung gung. Gung gung. So we're always training this percussive impact. This is what's great about the weapon work. Percussive impact. Bo, 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 bo. Bo, 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 bo. That's it. Good. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can also do this on the body. Yeah, good, Petrus, nice. Yeah, you can do this also in different parts of the body. One of the things we are really not used to in Aikido is being hit. We don't like being hit. And you know on the mat, if you ever hit someone, just by accident, you will get a reaction, which is like shock, usually, most of the time. Most Aikido, most Aikido people aren't used to being hit. If you come from a striking art where you get hit a lot, this is quite normal, so. 
just get it a little bit like you can do that. You can also do it to the leg. You can also do it onto the body. So a lot of the work we do in, in the dojo is about getting people comfortable with receiving impact. And if you think about it, it's what we do anyway when we receive ukemi. So if you think about like an irimi nage, this is a big, big, big atemi to the, to the body. It's just happening through the whole structure. A temi where it just seems is a bit more direct. So it's a bit more targeted. Especially people don't like being hit in the face. We've got a big fear about hitting and being hit in the face. Just strike really, really lightly. Just on the face as well. <laughs> Punch yourself in the face. It's a bit like that scene in Fight Club when he realizes he's not two people, he's one. But just get a feeling very light, just impacting the body. And you know your own body, so don't take it too far. Don't hit yourself too hard. Hopefully you don't end up with too much bruises. But just get a feeling you can impact anywhere on the body with any part of the hand. Just play with the body a little bit. Just watch you don't hit any organs. Like it's a bit hard to hit your own kidneys, but don't hit your kidney. Don't hit yourself in the eye. <laughs> don't hit yourself in the nose. Just watch these kind of soft areas. Very, very, very easy. Don't hit yourself in the temple too hard also. You might concuss yourself. It happened once to me, so don't do it. <laughs> Boom. That's it. And you notice like when any, any art that does like impact work, I always look at like sumo. One of the warm-ups they do is like this beating the body. <clears throat> so they start by doing this piece of kind of impact stuff to like get used to the body being impacted. So when it happens, they're not like <laughs> someone hit me. Like, just play a little bit with it. A lot of the yeah, can you see also sensei did a lot of these kind of movements like beating himself. So Kimura got all this kind of work as well. So you see different sensei. Got these. That's it. That's it. Just That's another form of mass. Michael? Yeah. Me the same feeling as when you get when you do a free fall or something and you hit the, the tatami. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. So there's when you do like Tobo Kemi, you do like boom, in the mat. I need to be like, I need to be something like solid but soft. The yeah. best person at the best person at this is uh, is Juan Yuan Center. Like Juan Yuan is just able to go. You see, he did a demonstration once with um, Pat Hendricks, and then he just takes this takes of these ukemi on a hard basketball court, mm. and he just boom springs back up, boom springs back up, and sometimes he's actually landing the whole body down. Sometimes he's so good he can land on his feet again and like boom and spring back up. But that that sense of springiness is actually really really important. And for us, that the ukemi work is like is so essential to that kind of training in terms of like how to receive impact into the body. So yeah, the, 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 the kind of more I can take that kind of a chemi. <clears throat> and also, yeah, in terms of these kind of high folds, so sort of really, really, really useful. Yeah, so that's that same kind of feeling, yeah. Yeah, you, you see this in uh, in judo as well. So yeah. going, yeah. solely purpose is taking out, uh, taking uh, ukemi. Yeah, yeah, so too. And it's, I like what I like about judo, it's super clear. You've got the, the person like, I, I just be a ragdoll and I just receive the ukemi for the book. They just throw me around and pff, I just receive it. That's all my, that's all I'm using. Uh, Kido, we got a bit mixed up. So we kind of, we're in, working resistance. What am I doing? Judo, it's really clear. There's a point when I'm just a ragdoll and then there's a point when I, when we compete against each other. And that's super clear. Aikido is a bit kind of jumbled in that sense. So it's a, it's a bit of a tight rope in Aikido, but. But yeah, this kind of idea where you just receive. So we just do that. That's it. Okay, got it. Nice and comfortable. Okay, good. We'll move on. We'll do a little bit. I'm going to go a little bit fast through it. So don't worry if you get a bit uh, confused with them. They're quite simple, but we'll, we'll kind of cover them all and then we'll kind of mix them in. And there'll be time you can ask whatever questions you like. So we just start really basic with the ski. So I'll start with the shoulder width apart. And this is just nice and easy. So you're just going to come here. Well, most of us are kind of used to making the ski, so just going to be here, hips kind of on the hands by the hip. And just the first few, you're going to do a special one. So you're going to keep the front fist in front, and you're just going to meet the fists together. So you're going to draw one back, meet it. So that the front fit, one fist is always going to stay at the front. So it's that, that. And just the first few, don't do this like you're striking. Just do it again like you're kind of compressing the structure out. So it's that, that. Just nice and soft. Draw back. Press through, draw back, press through, draw back, press through, draw back, 
press through. Okay, just try that. Okay. Watch a few. Okay. 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 So one of the things uh, Temi work movement in general requires, especially a Temi is precision. So if, if you if you go to a karate school, especially like a Shotokan karate style, you will spend months doing this kind of exercise. And there's a whole set to like get into it. So you've got like this, drawing down, reaching out, falling back. So there's a big load of sequence before that that you need to learn as well. But I'm not going to go into it because it's not my interest with Aikido. But we're gonna, I'm going to use a bit of it, but get the feeling like you feel, draw back. So or every part of it's like full of feeling. It's like, and then once you do it, it needs to be really precise. So make a big difference between being here, here, here. I don't want to be like jumbling everything up. So really use the fists. Now you're going to come to this kind of position. So every time I'm using the hand as a guy, oh, that was a battle. And I want it to go directly to it. That's a battle. That one. So I'm looking for like really deep precision, like, like mechanical precision. That's it. And use that hand as like a really as guiding. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, good. Yeah, and if you if you're more if you're a bit more familiar with like Chinese arts, sometimes this kind of punching style is a bit easier. This is a lot easier for me to structure the shoulder around. This one, the, the big problem with it is I start to twist the shoulder up. So striking like this that we people see in like kung fu films, karate films. And most people come into these kind of positions. If you strike someone like this, then all the force is gonna go into the shoulder. So we usually start in the dojo, like teaching that kind of strike, that kind of strike. So, so just play a little bit. If, you, if you're used to kind of twisting the fist. That's it. And unfortunately, this is very boring work. And it takes a long time to, to kind of, it takes a lot of time to get into it. And we just, that's the problem. We don't do it in the train because it takes so much time to get this kind of work in detail and get everything in place. And quite frankly, we've got better things to do in Aikido because we're working with totally different things like a West Day, all this stuff. A Temi is interested, very interested, really great topic, but it takes a heck of a lot of work to kind of, to work it. The good news is we do a lot of the work in the, in the weapon work. So again, it's going back to that feeling we've got in the weapon work, really high precision, impacting, really taking things slow. All that work is there in the, in, in the weapon work. Just a question of adapting a little bit. That's it. Good. Okay, next step, you go from here and then you, what, what you do is like draw the hand back. So you can either do it in that position, that way, and you can keep the fist down like that, just punching it through, or you can twist it. I'm a bit more used to this, so I kind of teach it like this, but roll it through. Now the hands are gonna work together. This is the key thing now. What you have before is like a guy and you met it. What are you going to do now? Both hands together. Both hands together. There. And just the first few, really slow. So again, this is the this is the annoying thing. It, it needs a lot of time slow, really precision work. So nothing to do with power. Fortune is very dull. It's very boring. Listen, just no other way around it. There. That's it. That's it. Good. Nice. Yeah, good, Bernie. Nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, really great. Okay. Good. So, again, why I teach the, from the push in the dojo, spend a little bit. When we go to pushing, what people do or normally with the push is actually kind of push out. So that there's, there's a feeling in the push is like a push out. So I'm pushing out of structure. What, what I teach in the push is like a compression. So again, it's like contact to the ground and then a compression out. So I'm actually meeting the body, meeting the structure, and then I'm compressing through the ground with it. But it's not about like pushing through the space like this. It's the same with the strike. So I get into the dip, I get into range and then boom, I compress the whole structure through the ground out. But it's not about doing this. So that's one way to punch. It's, it's efficient, it's very good. And you'll see a lot of the times like in MMA, this kind of thing, I'm gonna throw the weight. <clears throat> that's okay, but what I want a little bit more in, in this case is like functionality. And in terms of doing something else next, just have the sense that the structure is gonna compress down. So keep the feet down, but keep the sense now you're just gonna, there's no real push or pull. 
So you're using the back hand now to balance the body. So I'm not going into these kind of positions. But really allow the body to settle back, back, back. And if you want, just add a little bit of power, just a little bit of speed, a little bit of power. If you feel you can take the structure, you can keep the structure in place. Keep it, keep it quite light. And again, just enjoy it a little bit. The key thing is to notice balance. Notice whether I'm pushing the structure out. Again, keeping my relationship with the ground very clear. That's it. Good. That's it. That's, that's good. That's it. Okay, good. We'll go to the uraken. So one of my favorite moves, it goes like this. You go out to the side, you're going to wrap the arm around the front. So it like wraps around the chin like this. And then what you do is this hand draws back in the same way. And at the same time, you whip the arm out and it comes back to the structure. The first few do whichever is your dominant hand, left side or right side, most of you right side. But get the feeling like this, just go here and go boom, back to the body. So it's going to go here, wrap, and then boom, and then back. So it goes out and back straight away. So it's like a snap. Just do a few on the same side. So it goes boom, boom, back, wrap, and then boom, boom, back, wrap, and then boom. It's very light. That's it. You want something that's quite elastic. That's it. Okay. So you'll know with these kind of karate gis, this, this is not a karate gi, but you'll notice with the karate gi, when you do these movements, you get the snap. So that all the karate fanatics are a bit, they're, they're, they're fanatic about the snap. I want to make a good snap when I do the, when I do the tenny. And you only get that snap if you, if you brush the arm across the gi like this. So if I'm doing something like this, the arm's kind of out of structure. So that, that snap is a way to go, but the arm's going to do like that. So it's really quite close to the body. This is, a, and this is like where I find the kind of sweet spot in the technique is like, it's somewhere here. If I'm going here, it's possible, but in this case, let that arm really like snap back into the body. And this also, it's like brushing and back. It's like brushing it and back, back, boom. And let the whole structure go with it. Da, da, da. And feel free to break all these down as well. You don't always have to do the full movement. That's it. Good. That's it. That's it. Good. That's it. Switch the lights. Oh. So, also, I'm a bit like not hyper mobile. Just watch this. Like, when you do the strike, when I make the impact, I need the structure to be in place. So that means like all this kind of area, the back of the body needs to be in a position where it's quite solid. So I imagine like if I get to that position, if someone was to push back into the arm, I can receive it into the structure. What I don't want to do with the impact point is something like that. Again, it's where the structure's out. Now, if someone's to push against this arm, it's super easy for them to just, just to take the body over. So imagine, imagine the impact point, and it doesn't have to be a person. It can just be a wall. It can be a, be a thing, a tree. It can be whatever, whatever you like. But just get the feeling that at that impact point, Something needs to be boom, grounding down. Boom. This. So it's got a quality now of like rare. That at that point, something needs to be hitting the ground. So again, we practice this in the weapons. If you think about the bokken work, you, you have a kind of double impact with the center into the ground and then boom with the bokken. So it's the same kind of quality. Center, that. And the whole structure needs to be in place. 
for the impact, well, for the impact to have any kind of weight in it and for me not to receive it off balance. That's it. Good. That's it. Nice. Good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Great. So, good, we're going to do one more and then we're going to play with them. So this is like a Yoko Minuchi, so nice and easy. You're going to come to here, the, the hands above the head. And this one, it's about in where I would line up for the target. It's about the fingertips, about the line of the temple here. And then what you're going to do is like drive it down. But this arm's going to do the same thing as before. So you're going to go this, this, and at the same time, you're going to strike it down. So it's going to come like this, boom. And then do the same thing. What you're going to do is draw it back up. Just do the same side there. You're in a neutral position with the body, and then you apply the hips, boom, and then back. Find a nice neutral position, nice and tall, long, and then boom, comes in through. And the idea is like cutting through it. Just do a few on one side. Do it the first on your dominant side. And when you feel comfortable, go to the other side. So it's like this, and then, and then back. And back. And back. And again, I'm really looking for like a precision in it. That's it. That's it. Good. Good. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Again, think about the Bokken works. So, <clears throat> Yoko Minuchi tends to be the easiest one to do for us. So, when you do the bottom work, like I need the body to be grounded when the strike comes in. So I need to, I need to have a clear ground as I do it. If I do the strike like this, uh, uh, it's gonna, I'm gonna like the impact's gonna be limited. So again, it's about pressing through the ground to do it. So really imagine you've got a, a really clear line to the ground. So if I do the strike like this, uh, uh, where's the base? It's kind of over here somewhere. So I throw myself out the base. Get a sense that as you do this, oh, it's something impacting the ground. Oh, this. And then all the power of the ground and the weight of my body is being channeled through the hand. Bam! But I'm not throwing my weight into the hand. Does that make sense? So it's like, go, go, go. The weight stays in the body. And I use the hand as a channel for it, but I'm not throwing the weight into it. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Got it. Here we go. Again, just go back to the sword work. What we do with the sword is exactly the same. Same body mechanics. Good. That's it. Boom. So I'll do this as a quick set, and then I want to go into move, take them into movement because we can spend too much time on this kind of static. So what I want to do is just a quick set now of six moves. So you start with the ski, do this really slow, just to really get into the system. Feel like this one, two, wrap, three, wrap, four, your command, five, six, and we finish. And then just start again. So each time you just run through the six, start with the dominant hand. So you go right, ski, two, wrap, wrap, yoko manuchi, yoko manuchi, and then back. And then just take your time with it. So you've got six strikes. If you get kind of lost in it, you get kind of, oh, what am I doing? Just go back to the first two movements. So the ski, you've got two skis, two uh, oraken, and then two yoko minuchi. And don't worry about messing them up. 
this order order's a bit arbitrary, but there we go. And again, it's about the quality of it. So it's not about getting to the end of the set. It's really about just the moment you're doing it. Bam. That's it. Good. Nice. So. Yeah, and especially if you're in like a karate dojo, especially Shotokan, but they, each of these would be like a position. So it'd be like, right, this is a position. And then the teacher would come around and he would test the structure. So they would hit you in the arm, hit you in the lower back, maybe with a shinai, maybe with the hand, but he would give you feedback on the structure. And this is like to impact the structure back into place. So each of them would be like, I come to here, and then everything would be checked. And then and then they would go, okay, next movement. And boom. And then they would check. And if everything's a bit out of place, I go back to the beginning. So it works like this. And again, it's not nice work. It takes a long time. And it is what it is. It takes a long time. It's just one of those things. So training the structure is never easy. But the, again, the good thing is we, we always train the structure in this way anyway, so it's not adding something different. So we're not really learning karate work. We're just trying to apply what we do with the impacting work and the sword work and the jaw work into the body. So, And all these kind of atemi work are included in what we do anyway, so just giving a bit of structure to it. That's it. Good. Okay, good. So technically, none of what we've done is a temiwaza. Because what is a temiwaza? If you think about it, what is a temiwaza? It's a question. What is a temiwaza? Oh. It's a location of strikes within a move. Yeah. It's distracting people. Uh, part of it. Softening people up so you can throw them. Little bit, yeah. But a, a temiwaza, I mean, this is really just striking drills. So these are like striking drills. So a temiwaza means actually sh striking the body. So a temi is like, is hitting the body. So it really means like I'm applying it to hit someone else. So this stuff is all like striking drills. So when you, what we mean by a temiwaza is like, is a strike to, to manipulate the body, to put it into a certain position, so soften them up so that I can then apply, apply the movement. Now again, we do that, especially in this style, we do this all the time. So a temiwaza is integral to what we do. The, the best one, the most clearest example is like shomanuchi. We just come up and that's a temiwaza. That's coming up. And it does a little bit like Keith saying, like distract the person. It gives me a distraction and then I soften the person up as well. And then the technique follows. So the, the temiwaza is, is like integrated into the technique. It's not something like I move to position and then I strike the person. It's really a sense like I move that, boom. So the, the, it's a strike to facilitate a technique, basically. And a lot of the atemi, the, the atemi work that you know we have in the style, especially like Kotagaishi, when we come into this kind of position, uh, Iriminak, especially Shomanuchi initiating, they are, they are really necessary for the technique. The technique will not work without them. So you can't remove them because they, they, they're necessary to facilitate the technique. Now, a lot of the uh, atemi work that was taken out of the system isn't necessary. But it's there, and it's there to give me options. But all of the Temi was that like Saito Sensei knew, and he kind of extracted that he took them out of it because he saw they were like breaking the movements up a little bit. So they were breaking the awase, or the, the person was becoming too focused on striking. So a lot of them were removed. But that's a lot of blah blah blah. Know that like a Temi was is not just striking. It's it's really striking to a, with a purpose, which for us is not to kill like you were doing karate. I'm just going to strike them in the throat. That's just to disable them totally. In, in Aikido, we're using either to distract or to manipulate the body, to put it in a position where I can make a technique. So we use it in those kind of ways. But the crux of the atemi was whether I'm using it for distraction or to, to soften the body, it needs to have a lethal impact. Because if it doesn't have that lethal quality, it won't function properly. And it won't, if you, if you think about like, the, the easiest example is like throwing a ball. So if I've got a ball, I've got a ball. Oh yeah, I've got a ball. 
So I've got a ball. If you don't believe I'm going to hit you with the ball, you won't move. So if I do a strike, if I do a throw that's something like, you won't move, you won't flinch. But if I do a throw that's like this, you will go like this, right? And you'll try and either avoid it or try and catch it. But so my atemi wasa needs to have that lethal potential. So we need to train it to that quality. But again, it takes a long time to get there. And it's actually not one of my interests to be lethal in that sense. You can do that in karate, but but it needs to have a, it needs to have a, at least a quality and an intention that I'm really going to hit weak weak areas of the body with it. But being able to control that, being precise, is really what's key to it. So last couple of minutes, a lot of blah blah. But what I want to do now is just move the body around. Use these use these three. So you've got the ski. You've got the uraken and you've got the yokomuchi. And just play with moving around and just see see what, what comes up. So there's certain techniques that I know will come up with the uraken. Ikkyo, this kind of work. The ski kind of coming into kotagaishi. So it's kind of now applying these kind of dynamics. Mm -hmm. It will never look like the basic template for the for the for the attack, for the drip. So this kind of work basically falls away, it becomes much more subtle. Becomes much more subtle, becomes adapted, <laughs> becomes adapted, becomes adapted. So it's going to come from a different kind of position. The way the drill is nice is that it gives you a very clear template to apply. But just move around a little bit, just look, just uh, explore different techniques. Where, where would you apply a temi? If you get a little bit lost, just think about how would you strike. But, but the kind of striking, attacking work isn't really a temi work. So if you think about coming into attack someone with a yokoman, it's not really a temi work. Because I'm just trying to hit the person. I'm not really trying to do anything else with it. I'm trying to really knock them out with the yokoman. So. That's it. And the key thing, just stick to what you know, but really play with it. So it can be just really simple. I play a lot of time with the, just the Urakan, just Ikkyo. How do I get that from here to here? How do I get from here to here? Really, really basic stuff. Just toss it out. There we go. And especially dangerous for solo work is we get stuck in fantasy land. So I go, um, yeah. Yeah, great, but none of it's functioning. So really get a sense that you're like in a space. Really imagine there's people in the room, or I'm like, they're actually grabbing hold of me and core. How do I move and find the strike? And core, how do I move and find the strike? Or think about a lot of the atemiwas that we have is in the weapons work. So if you think about Tachi Dori, Joe Dori, a lot of that atemi work is, is really, is really, a lot of the movements are atemiwas, all this kind of stuff. Oh, it onto the hand. So just play a little bit with them. Just explore. And also have fun because a temi was is great fun. Great fun. There you go. That's it. So, any questions about any of it? Anything? Any burning questions about anything? Hopefully, it's pretty clear. How much do you use the hips? Is this like a hip movement or more of an upper arm, upper body movement? 
in, I mean, when you start these, like for coordination work, it's really about coordinating the arms. So I'm trying to coordinate the arm, especially in the ski work, like how do I coordinate the arm? Now, as soon as I've got that coordination in place reasonably, then it's about kind of applying again, like going, if I think about weapon work, applying the hip work to it. So getting the hips up. And then I'm looking at a structure, which is basically like center to periphery, mm -hmm. like that kind of thing. So then it's, to it's total like hip work. Mm -hmm. And when you're doing movement, especially like if you look at these movements, like kat uh, katata dori, for example, like coming out, finding that strike, that's totally like a hip work movement. So it's like here, that, so it's got, it's got that kind of quality. And that's really like driven by the hip. And again, it's about, it's always, it always for me, it goes back to this, this old Chinese classic, like sourcing the power in the ground, channeling it through the center and letting it out through the periphery, through the hand. So that, that classic is like a guiding, really like a guiding, principle for for us as well or for me but th that's that's the kind of thing and the, the hips really like the motor for the movement it's really like how i'm going to channel the movements of the fist so that's always the hips always going to be be like that it's where we like we leave the center for a while we look at the periphery aikido works a bit external to internal so we look at stuff and we look at coordination stuff and then we go into the center so but we we go a bit long way around it so that's a bit there thank you okay Good. Okay, nothing else? Super clear. Okay, good. Yeah, unfortunately it's just boring. So if you want, if you want to really go into this stuff, it just takes a hell of a lot of time. And again, it's like it's stuff we can cover in the class, but very minimally, because we've just got better things to do, really. Like awase work, my all this stuff, it takes so much time. We're just I mean, we're really focusing on kiddo, our specialty is blending. It's not really in, in like striking potential. So yeah. The, the good again the good thing is we practice in the weapons anyway so we do train it but it's again it's about unlocking the skill a little bit because we do need to train the attempt work a bit more you can see it's a bit it's a bit light so okay but again play with it enjoy it that's the main thing so okay hi <laughs> Great. 